Hello and welcome to this stock market game training video produced by the Georgia Council on Economic Education. In this episode, we will look at how to analyze some data to help your students decide which stocks they should choose. In the first video in this series, we learned that there is no one thing a person can look at to determine whether or not a stock is going to be a winner. We suggested that, as a start, students need to brainstorm companies they were interested in, check the news and basic information about those companies, and possibly conduct some searches for top stock gainers, or try to find companies they didn't know about. At some point, however, the students are going to come across a page like this and wonder what all these numbers are and how these numbers can help them decide on stocks. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to use Google's finance page found at google.com slash finance. This is mainly just because of familiarity. The information found here is consistent no matter which source you find it in pretty much, and it can be found in a bunch of other places as well, so choose the one you like. We won't be talking about any specific stocks in the video because one, the Georgia Council doesn't want to endorse a particular stock choice over another, and two, the numbers found in this video aren't likely to be the same for any given stock if you are watching this video at a later time. One final caveat, please remember that there is no single metric by which every stock can be judged. The market is complex and dynamic and affected by everything from quarterly reports to political whims to what the Federal Reserve Bank is doing to rapidly changing current events. These numbers here are to help you make decisions, but shouldn't necessarily be the only thing upon which your decisions are based. With that in mind, let's get started. I have a stock pulled up here of a large Fortune 500 company. The first thing to note is the price of the stock, seen here. This is how much it costs to purchase one share of this stock. The numbers to the side indicate how much this price has changed since the market opened at 9.30 on this particular day. The first number is the actual dollar amount of the change, and the number in parentheses is the percentage of the price. Which is more important? Well, typically, the percentage matters more than the actual dollar amount. For example, here's a stock that increased by $8 in one day. $8 in one day, that's great, right? Except that was only 1% of the actual stock price. Here's one that increased by only $2, but that was almost 8% of its price. Okay, so the stock we're focused on seems to be a little bit up today. What else can we learn? The range indicates the lowest price and the highest price fetched for that stock on that particular day. In the Georgia stock market game, everyone is going to get the four o'clock price for the stock, so the intraday range is really only important towards the end of the day. The highs and lows don't really matter. The 52 week range is a little different. This shows how this stock has been priced over the last year. While there's no hard and fast rule here, many analysts prefer to pick stocks that are closer to the low end of the range and have upward momentum. This works in reverse for stocks that you wish to short sell. Stocks trading near their 52 week high often hit some resistance and trend downward until some new information about the company comes out. The open is just the price the stock was when the market opened today. Nothing particularly helpful for analysis. You may have noticed as this video has been going that the price of our stock is changing a little bit. That is because, and remember to tell this to your students, the market is live and active. People are trading this stock right now. And that is what is causing those price fluctuations you're seeing here. The volume slash average tells you how many shares were traded on the last trading day. And the average tells you how many shares were traded per day over the last month. Generally, the higher the trading volume, the more stable the stock is. Once you start dealing with stocks that have low volumes, you're more susceptible to ups and downs with prices, which some students might want, given that they only have 10 weeks in the game. There is no magic number that is good or bad, but if your students press you, stocks that trade in the 50,000 shares or less per day range are typically quite volatile. 
It's unlikely your students will be involved in these kind of stocks, but it is possible. Market cap is determined by the following formula. Number of shares outstanding times the price per share. Remember that owning stock is actually a partial ownership in the company. If someone were to buy the entire company, they would in theory have to buy all of the stock. The market cap, therefore, could be thought of as the overall price to buy out a company. From this number, companies are classified as mid cap, large cap, etc. This is generally more of a metric used for long term investing, but even for the stock market game, students might at least want to take a look at this number. Do they want big companies or small companies? The general rule here is the smaller the company, the more upside potential it has, but the more risk it can carry. The opposite is true for large companies. The next metric is one of the more confusing ones, but to some people, one of the most useful. The P in P-E ratio stands for price. This price here. The E stands for earnings per share. Earnings per share is a formula where the company takes all of their income, subtracts out dividend payments, and divides what is left by the number of shares. Basically, in terms of actual income of the company, this number is what your one little piece of stock is actually worth. What does this mean? Well, in our example, the price of this stock is around $12. The earnings per share are $2.25 as of the last report. So, doing the math, 12 divided by 2.25 gives us somewhere in this range. Now, it's not an exact number because the price of the stock seen here is changing constantly, but it's close enough. Some market analysts love PE ratios, and others pay them absolutely no attention. In general, however, You'd typically prefer a stock for long-term investing with a P.E. ratio somewhere between 1 and 10. For a 10-week stock market game, however, all bets are off. Some students want a higher P.E. ratio. Why? Well, it can be at least a partial sign of a risky stock that may be set to take off at any moment. Remember the formula? Let's take this stock, for example. Its price is almost $110. But the earnings per share? only 1.96. That means that people are paying $110 for a stock that, if taken literally, is worth only $1.96. Why would anyone do that? Well, maybe they have a lot of faith in the company. Maybe people are excited about a new product coming out. On the flip side, a P.E. ratio of less than one would indicate that a stock is underpriced that the company is earning more money than the stock price would indicate. As you can imagine, these situations are rare and don't typically last very long. Dividends are the share of profits companies distribute to stockholders. Not all companies pay dividends, but the ones that do pay them according to some schedule that's usually put out months in advance. This number here indicates the amount that this company paid on their last dividend. The yield is calculated by dividing the annual dividends per share by the price per share, and it's expressed as a percentage. In real life investing, dividends can be attractive for people looking to keep their money in a company for a long period of time, or just trying to use dividend payments for income. For the stock market game, however, dividends aren't likely to win you the game, but still they may provide a nice boost to your portfolio. Learn more about dividends in the next video in this series. The shares is the total number of shares the company has issued. No real analytical power here, since you'd be better off looking at market cap and volume if you were interested in that kind of thing. The beta score is another measure, like the P-E ratio, that some people love and others ignore. The beta is the measure of how volatile a stock is compared to the S&P 500. A beta score of 1, for example, would mean that when the S&P goes up 5%, the stock goes up 5%. A beta score of 2 would mean that when the S&P went up 5%, that stock would go up 10%. The higher the beta, the more volatile the stock is. For a 10-week game, students may wish to take a risk on some stocks with a higher beta score so they see some real movement in their portfolio. Make sure they understand, however, that this works in reverse just as well and stocks with high beta scores can fall pretty hard on bad days. And just in case you run into it, 
A negative beta score would mean that the stock moves opposite the market. Rare, but it can happen. Finally, the inst own statistic here is what percentage of this company's shares of stock are being held by institutions like large pension funds. A higher percentage is typically associated with a pretty safe stock that's on one of the major indices. So let's break down this stock that we've been looking at here with our new information. It's currently trading towards the lower end of its 52 week range. Its volume is fine, no news there. It's a very large cap company with a modest PE ratio. They pay a decent dividend, indicating they're profitable. They have a low beta, and institutions seem to like this stock. The takeaway then? This is most likely going to be a safe, steady stock without a lot of change up or down, particularly over a 10 week period. Can this change? Absolutely, overnight even. But we can't see the future. All we can see is the past and make a guess based on the best information we have. Speaking of the past, immediately under all the data here is a graph that students can use to see how this stock has trended over time. You can look at different time frames, three months, six months, this year, all time for the stock. You can also use this to compare the stock to the overall market by clicking one of these buttons. Or you could compare this stock to another stock by entering the name of the stock you wanted to compare to here. This is pretty fun for students to play around with, but just make sure that when they change time frames, they pay attention to this axis as the numbers will change according to how much time has passed. Wow, uh, we've covered a lot in the last several minutes, so feel free to watch again if you think you missed something. I hope you have at least a good starting point to begin helping students understand how to do some basic analysis. In the next video, I will go over three ways to make money on stocks, including dividends, long positions, and short positions.